Yo guys, what's going on? What's happening? Welcome to a pretty gloomy day in England. Yep, winter is here. I wanted to talk about, the other day on Snapchat, I said that I think Formula E is gonna be bigger than Formula One in 10 years, you know, five to 10 years. And it didn't exactly cause like widespread controversy. I called people agreed with me, called people disagreed. But I wanted to go into a little bit more detail as to why I think that's the case. So the first reason is big car manufacturers. Uh, people like Audi, Porsche, you know, VW Group, like all these huge car names um, have either one already signed up Formula E or have announced that they're pretty interested. Um, I mean, the main one being Audi. Uh, Audi have said that they won't join Formula One while Bernie's running the job. So that kind of shows you where those negotiations are at, which I think just gives you an insight as to what, what Formula One is. And um, I've actually got to keep this short because if I start talking about well, like things I think F1 are doing wrong and where, what they should be doing, um, we could be here forever. So I've got to, got to rein it in if I start going off on that tangent. Um, but yeah, Jaguar and BMW had, had a short run in Formula One, um, but they didn't really get very competitive, so they leave, and that's that sort of a thing that happens. Like Mercedes, I think if they stop winning, um, you know, give it five years of losing, and then they'll probably go. Like for the car manufacturers, it's a, it's a huge benefit for them when they're winning in a sport like that, because then they sell cars off the back of it. And so, You've got Jaguar BMW who are in Formula E this year and um, Audi and Porsche who have pretty much earmarked a position for next year or the year after. Uh, and, and this is huge. This is huge to get those sort of big businesses as well as, I think there's a couple of big Chinese car manufacturers, which is huge. I mean, China, you know, one of the biggest emerging markets. Um, and also Faraday Future, who despite being kind of secretive and not really having much of a product yet. Um, I think they're trying to position themselves as somewhat as a Tesla rival. So so it, it all kind of, you can see why these businesses are, are getting into the sport. Um, and the main reason for that, the main reason for Jaguar, Porsche, Audi getting into it is battery technology. The biggest problem right now with high performance electric only cars is battery temperatures. Um, and how to manage them temperatures and dissipate the temperature, you know, for more performance or like um, for a sustained performance. Um, and that's why I think a Tesla hasn't set a Nurburgring lap time because just after that, that long, the batteries heat up and it can't dissipate the energy particularly well. Um, so a lot of these companies, a lot of these car manufacturers are using Formula E as a platform to develop that technology. And they could, they could get a test mule car and run it around the track all day, all night for a lot less of a budget than they can in Formula E. But not only are they able to sort of work on that technology in a, in a roughly accelerated way because of that, you know, the extra high performance and the competitiveness of the championship. Also, it allows them to do it on the world stage, which, which kind of goes, can go good or bad. Um, but if they start to develop that technology better than everyone else, it then shows them headlines, you know, in, in Sunday papers, um, are worth more to them than just running a test mule around a track and then trying to sell a car off the back of the, you know, we did a load of R&D. Um, they'll sell more cars if they are more competitive in Formula E compared to if they just develop the same technology sort of in-house. Um, it, it just, it's marketing is all it is, really. And with some of the new rules in Formula E that have been introduced and that are going to introduce, going to be introduced, um, it's given it's given the teams more scope for development and where i think like the first year or two the cars were pretty much just stock cars everyone used the same car now they're starting to to get a little bit more differentiated uh oh another reason which i think formula e have crushed it is the fact that they are able to have races in major cities i mean how many times have you heard the rumor that F1 are gonna have a race in New York or New Jersey or London? Um, and it's, it's never come off. There's a lot of, one, noise restriction, two, the extra speed of the Formula One cars and the FIA regulations mean they need 
bigger runoff, so it, it becomes more difficult to find find roads in London that they could use as a track. And then all this other red tape and, and the silly, silly money that Bernie asks for, a, for an F1 race, which I think Formula E's done well. Um, I don't know as much about their dealings with, with setting up a race, how much it is to actually buy a race, but F1 have got some problems in that, that area. And I hope that the new buyout by Liberty Media, is it? I hope they just come in like a fucking whirlwind and just be like, we're changing everything because Formula One's got problems and I'm not going down this road. <laughs> but yeah, please just, just Formula One just needs, it needs updating. It's, it's stuck in 95, you know, it just, modern day, let's go. So then there's a lot of little clues um, as to why I think Formula E is going to be bigger than Formula One. Um, one of those is the sponsors. Some of the sponsors that are on the cars are, are kind of these big companies which you know, could advertise in Formula One, but have chosen not to. Um, and so I think that's another little clue, a little, little spark to say, yeah, I think, you know, they're doing something right. Um, another one is you're going to have kids who grow up this day and age who only experience electric cars. You know, their family will have a Tesla or a Renault Zoe or something like that. And then, you know, the next car that they'll buy is will be electric. And then when they pass, try their driving test, it'll be electric car and they'll buy an electric car. So then... Formula E just aligns themselves with that better. They're going to probably look at Formula One as just loud, obnoxious cars. And so I think if Formula One don't address that, it's a problem. Um, I would really like to see Formula One cars use a similar technology to the Koenigsegg uh, Regera, where it has a, a petrol engine, but it's direct drive by electric motor. And I think, I think a key part of that would be to have the engine homologated, so every single team uses the same engine, but allows the teams to adapt and develop their own battery and electric motor technology. Because then you get, you get that sound and drama um, of part of Formula One, but you also, you're also helping to use the, the new technology. Um, and that is a big part of, of, of what Formula One's done in the past and what Formula E is going to do. Um, if you look at traction control, traction control was pretty much born from Formula One and rally, um, and then it, it, it finally gets filtered down. And so there's a lot of technologies which has started in high-level motorsport, and it gets filtered down and filtered down until eventually it's on your little abath, and you can be like, yeah, traction control, cool. <laughs> and so there's just, honestly, 10 years from now, 90% of people are going to drive electric cars, and for a lot of people, it's not going to change their life. I think... I think if you, I, I bet there's people out there who don't know if their car's petrol or diesel. They're just like, I don't know, it just it makes a noise. It goes like, it doesn't. A lot of people don't want or need a petrol car. Some of us like we love it. Like we love the sound, the drama, and and so we'll we'll have like a special weekend car. Um, but 90% of people, 90% of cars, vans, lorries, infrastructure, trains, planes, it's all going to be electric, um, and and. And, and that is a way to save the petrol engine as well. Honestly, the, the car saved the horse, the electric car is gonna save the petrol car, so we can just we can go, go and enjoy it on a track day. So yeah, they're kind of, they're some of the little, the reasons I think, I think Formula E is gonna do well. Um, I'm closely watching the new buyout deal with F1. I hope they do good things. Um, and I'm closely watching Formula E because I really do think if they keep going on this path, I mean, they're three years in, if they keep going on this path, they're, yeah. I think it's a done deal. So let me know in the comments. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let's get this discussion going.